Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. It's Friday, mother truckers. Grab a beer, settle in, because we are going to talk your way into the weekend. How are you, Bradders? I'm all right, mate. Yeah, we've had we've had a sort of big week in beer this week. Um, Travelling, the length of the land, the length and breadth of the land, bit of camping. Yeah, bit of, pretty uh, epic weather. Rock in the main stage, bit of um, <laughs> brewing, all sorts this week. It's been it's been very beery. Very beery and very intense. I'm I'm feeling it this week. I'm I'm absolutely exhausted, which is probably lucky uh, because we are we are going to be taking a season break uh, for a couple yep. of weeks. But we'll tell you about that at the end. Should we? We should talk. We should talk about the Bigfoot bit first, shouldn't we? We should talk about the Bigfoot in the picture. Yes. Um, um, yeah, man. We we uh, we were very kindly invited to be the the morning entertainment on the main stage of Bigfoot Festival, uh, run by the guys that, that run Craft Beer London, Craft Beer Bristol. What else do they run, Johnny? Uh, Beer Central and Edinburgh Craft Beer Festival. Oh, that's it. That's the other, the other ones I always kind of get a bit um, uh, forgotten about, well, in my head anyway. It's, it's a lot of festivals. It's a lot of festivals. So, yeah, <laughs> we were we were kind of hosting two-hour slots uh, on the Saturday morning and the Sunday morning where we, we did a kind of like hipster sunday brunch where we got like sort of different luminaries from the festival whether they be um amazing chefs uh artisan producers you know sommeliers that were with incredible natural wines or or kind of gong yoga people to kind of come up and join us and you know we made right buffoons of ourselves for a, a couple of hours every morning which i thought we was did, great particularly with the gong yoga that was um, oh yeah it was. It was. I've I've done a bit of meditation in my time. I've done a little bit of yoga in my time, and I, I've never found it more hard to switch my brain off than being on the main stage of a festival <laughs> in total silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. But hopefully, everyone who was watching uh, was also, you know, with their eyes closed and totally silent. Um, so yeah, on top of that, yeah, we 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 had uh, Brad's mate Benedict, uh, but not Benedict Cumberbatch. That would have been quite. Ben, Quite well, the, that's, uh, the event. that's a good. That'd be a great mate to have, wouldn't it, Benedict uh, <laughs> Cumberbatch? Is that his name, Benedict Cumberbatch? Yeah, yeah. Getting I know. Every time that. I say, it, I'm like, that can't be a name. Yeah. That, well, I tell you what else can't, can't be, be a name. Right. Benedict Butterworth. That is. Yeah, that that's is also my nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's a lovely young, uh, quite posh wine sommelier, expert natural wine dude who I who I met randomly pre-COVID at an antiques fair that I was at and um, he sort of introduced me to the world of natural wines. And, I didn't realise uh, it was at a an antiques fair. I can't, I you know, probably yeah. everyone at an antiques fair is, is called things like Benedict Butterworth. <laughs> I say an antiques fair, it was more of a mid-century uh, <laughs> kind of thing. So not not true antiques, but kind of, you know, kind of modern, in, in modern in terms of design, it was a modernist fair. I a would retro, say. a retro. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's like a retro modernist fair. Was it a car boot sale? Are you just trying to? Are you just trying to <laughs> elevate? No, no. It's a it's a fancy it's a fancy thing I go to. I love I love design, and it's one of my regular things that I sort of go to lots of different fairs and stuff and just admire 
bits of furniture, slabs of wood, you know, bits of fiberglass made into chairs and all this sort of great stuff. So, um, yeah, I met I met him at one of those and uh, just sort of stayed in contact, really. But, yeah, I got to do some some sort of subraging up on the stage, which is where you, you uh, smash very artfully the lid, well, the top of the neck of the wine bottle from the rest of the wine bottle with uh, a butter knife or a spoon or a, a cavalry sword or an axe, as Benedict wanted to bring. Um, and I absolutely smashed it, mate, in every sense you of the did, word. You did, with a butter knife. Benedict's with butter, butter knife. knife. Benedict butter knife, yeah. So, um, um, and he, it took him three tries in demonstrating it to you, and you did, did it first time. It was, it did, it was unbelievable. We found your calling, I think. I, I think maybe I'm a, a natural sobrogist. Um I did point it at him and Don Som's face uh, when I tapped it, which afterwards he told me that could have gone off like a bloody grenade. So uh, <laughs> we nearly had an incident on the main stage, but uh, luckily for everybody involved, um, it didn't pop and... Uh, yeah, it was all good. It was all good. Everyone, we, we everyone did some survived. great stuff, man. We did. We came up with an amazing new shandy recipe when we oh. had uh, Robin, one of the founders of Square Root, on, and it was it was her idea actually to to blend her cola with a hoppy sour, which basically mm. created fizzy cola bottles. Yeah, like so, Haribo Tangfastic fizzy cola bottles. Yeah, one of my all time favorite things in life. Mm. Um, they're geniuses, those guys at Square Root. I mean, I knew I loved the taste of all of their their sodas, but actually having a chat to them uh, one-on-one, on on stage and off stage, and just learning about the process of how you make craft soda and the sort of the pitfalls that, that, you know, you can can kind of poison yourself um, quite badly with, with, uh, you know, making presses and preserves and all the sort of stuff that they do. Um, you know, it's it's kind of it's quite dangerous stuff, which I had yeah. No we don't idea have the about. alcohol to kill a lot of the yeah. uh, a lot of the bad stuff like you do in brewing. No alcohol. So we we were talking about um, you know the fact that you can uh, this is with working with stuff with with no alcohol in it. If the acidity isn't high enough, you can get things like botulism that can take root and the spores can form. Um, and, you, and you know that 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 kill you if you get botulism so uh they're like hyper aware of all that kind of stuff working in the non-alcoholic craft sector um which i just i had no idea about uh, but yeah they're, luckily they're we didn't go down this particular avenue while on stage <laughs> trying no. to help people get over their hangovers by talking about how hey you know that that garlic oil you just had that might have well, killed yeah. you mate so yeah uh, that that was yeah it. that was <laughs> never whatever you're doing out there in tv uh slash podcast land never make your own homemade garlic oil uh this came from from, from the guys they said basically uh you're creating an environment that that will breed spore forming bacteria like really dodgy bacteria so don't accept a gift of homemade garlic oil don't be giving out gifts of homemade garlic oil there you go <laughs> There you go. There's there's today's lesson. Um, so yeah, we had an amazing time, and what was really really great is while we were going around. So we stayed there for the rest of the festival. We had so many people come up and say hi and say they like the channel. So huge thank yous because it really makes our our day. Every you know, if it's one person, it makes our day. If it was like twenty or so that we had on on that Saturday, just stood at the day bar, like I walked away feeling like like a god among men. Although that might have oh. been the beer. Um, <laughs> So that was that was really nice. It was lovely meeting you all. If you're listening uh, today, um, what do you think of Bigfoot next year? We've got to go. It was amazing, right? Oh, dude, yeah, hundred percent. Hopefully, next time we'll be, we were on the main stage this time, but I'd like to be closer into the food uh, realm. Yeah, because everyone's trying to get food and shandies, yeah. and we were far away from the food and the shandies. Yeah, it made it a little bit tricky. And the coffee. But- We've learned a lot, and you know what? We working with with Greg is always a pleasure. Working with Ben was really interesting, as always. I love Ben; he's brilliant. And we we made a new best mate in um, Milo Speedwagon, uh, who was <laughs> our just a just a great. I mean, like the energy, the vibes that Milo gave off throughout the festival, I thought were just amazing. Like he to sort of give him a bit of context, he. 
he was kind of our, I guess, DJ and announcer. Um, and he, he was in control of the musical beds and he'd made us like custom jingles for each of our sections. He did graphics that were up on the screen, which were amazing. And uh, he's just like a real super cool guy. So we, we've been talking about can we take the sort of experience on the road to other festivals uh, once we're able to do other festivals. So, you know, we, we all love food and, and drink. So, I was uh, going to say, it could be the start of a, a beautiful and very chaotic relationship. Oh, yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, um, and if you don't believe us, you can also we put a video, like just a three minute video of our exploits over the weekend onto our Instagram, our IGTV. So if you just go to at Craft Beer Channel, you can watch mostly Brad dancing with a beer in his hand, but also <laughs> there's there's Milo and me and a bit of the sabraging happening, and um, you can see what it was like. And 100, percent if you can come next year, uh, it was amazing. We didn't watch a huge amount of the music because we were having too much fun with the beer and the food, but uh, there was some great music, some incredible food from amazing restaurants, some which in star restaurants yeah um and obviously fantastic fantastic beer uh so what else did we do this week we were at dark star yesterday yes we were, um, we were at dark star top secret projects but very exciting top secret project we're working mm. on we've been visiting a lot of real ale breweries and we'll be visiting more over the next couple of weeks so what watch out for that as that slowly forms into something that will be a huge deal come september we hope, oh, yeah. we hope it'll be you, a huge deal. It's a huge deal Do you deal know what I, I love most about yesterday was going to the original home of Dark Star in that pub in Brighton and mm. like like just seeing the genesis of that um, was, was great. They're like brewing in a tiny little basement. Um, well, a cellar. Just the corner of a cellar. It was almost like a broom cupboard and, <laughs> and how that has now, you know, flourished into what Dark Star is today I found pretty incredible. And what a great boozer that was. Like, I've never been to that boozer right near Brighton. Oh, you've never been in? No. No. Oh, it's every time I go to Brighton, we we pop in for a pint because it's a, a beautiful pub. And it, it, like at the time that we were there, sort of late afternoon in summer, it's just bathed in beautiful sunlight. It's a, a wonderful pub. And lots of sharing bottles of Burning Sky in there, as well as, you know, Hophead on cars. We, we haven't mentioned what, the name what, what of the pub, want? I've just realised. Um, it's the Evening Star in Brighton. The Evening Star, yeah, for anyone who wants to check it out. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. And um, after you left, I went for a, a Swifty before I jumped on the train and we went to another great pub called the Royal Albert, just about five minute walk away, which was very much your scene, Brad. I'm not sure if you've yeah. ever been to that one. Um, but they had loads of Burning Sky on cask and it was, uh, they have an amazing mural on the side of the pub that's all like amazing dead artists and musicians. Um, and then inside, it's uh, it's a gig venue, so uh, upstairs. So there've been some amazing bands that have left like signed records and stuff like that. It's a really, really cool vibe. Cool. Um, so yeah, we had a wonderful day yesterday and, and the fruits of our labor won't be seen until September, but trust me, if you like car scale, um, it's going to be big, uh, big for you and it's hopefully going to be really big for us and hopefully big for car scale as a whole. I'll leave Ooh. it there. Uh, Bradley, you've just watched this week's video. What did you think of our hop rubbing with Paul and Caitlin of Cloudwater? Yeah, it was great, man. Uh, hop rubbing, hop sniffing, hot snor- snorting. <laughs> uh it was hot hop stuff in general um yeah i thought it was awesome like obviously i wasn't i wasn't with you when you made that i think you were gallivanting making your book potentially while, while you it was book there. related yeah 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 so i wasn't involved in this one but yeah paul's just a font of knowledge uh who knows what black onion seeds smell like i'm not sure i do but um he was getting right in there with the with the they, they do kind of smell roughly like roughly like you'd imagine um, mm. you, you often get them in mango chutneys, if anybody's wondering what they are. I feel like um, I've had like black onion seeds on, on like fancy bread or, or like yeah, a bagel Yeah, you might have done something. there as well. Maybe like an oniony bagel. Yeah. Um, yeah, oniony, I'm guessing. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but more subtly oniony mm. and kind of nutty as well. Um, se- ses- oniony sesame, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it so yeah dank but in uh, dank but sexy i was yeah. desperately trying yeah. not to say sexy there and i couldn't think of a better word uh, well, dank uh but sexy much th- like this, you brad oh thank you this was um probably one of our most niche videos i would say um in terms of the, the level of detail yeah, the pellet density chat was uh, I, I that went on for a lot longer than <laughs> than was shown in the video as well. We shaved a good five minutes of of pellet density chat out of that. 
Um, because uh, as I think I say in the video, for, even for the craft beer channel, that was niche. I bet um, Paul's going to be well cross when he finds out he cut out, cut out <laughs> so much great <laughs> electricity <Pellet> chat. <laughs> He, uh, he he hasn't mentioned that in any yeah. messages, so hopefully I've got away with it. They, I mean, the SARS ones did sound like little bullets compared to everything else. So they were I so tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only ever handled um, whole flower SARS. I've never never handled mm. the pellets. I had no idea that that was the case. Um, Strong. Yeah, and I think I think I just want to point out something that you know I didn't really get to do in the video. You know, we talk about. Uh, Paul Jones of Cloudwater a lot you know he he sticks his neck out on a lot of of political and social issues um, and gets a lot of criticism uh, from people who disagree with him but also from people who do agree with him because they you know perhaps they think that beer isn't the place to do it or anything like that and we wholeheartedly support pretty much everything that Paul has done we were unsure on the supermarkets but we listened to his side of the story and we really liked it but what was really great about that video was remembering just how fucking knowledgeable that man is about beer and about brewing and about what the craft beer scene needs from a flavor and brewing point of view he's properly you know as close as we have in the uk to a visionary as far as i'm concerned you know there's a lot of people out in the states that you know have revolutionized the beer industry in many ways and the uk's always been uh well we've always kind of copied what's going on in the states and i think that paul is one of the people we can look to who can um push push the category forward um and i'd kind of forgotten that side of him because of everything else that was going on but it was amazing to you know we were chatting for it was nearly an hour that video what in its raw form um just nerding out about just one ingredient and and hopefully you know we've got video coming up about malt um and hopefully we'll be able to do the same for that um and we've already done it with uh with yeast on multiple occasions with like belgian trips and obviously our trip to lalleman so it was good to really nerd out about hops again big time big time uh comments brad did you did you find anything that uh tickled um, you or excited you or interested you there are a few comments about Dipper V3 being particularly tasty, which I do agree with. Um, but I did have one in my fridge, fridge of doom, uh, for a long time. <laughs> I was just too, I was like, oh, it's too special. I'm going to save it for something, which I don't know why I did that, because I know that it, it was going to kill it. But Yeah, you uh, can't was, do that with IPAs. It was too beautiful to um, to drink. So I just I just left it in my fridge door for about two years. Um at which point it, it was like just... um, Goodwill Hunting, where every morning I, I used to drive by and hope hope that it wouldn't be there, just yeah. <laughs> like hoping Matt Damon would have would have finally left. And um, exactly, it well, it did disappear, but we can't remember what happened to it. We must have drunk it. I don't know. I don't remember. I th- I think maybe I drank it and it just tasted like really caramelly and like no no hop sort of stuff going on. But I'm yeah. just and, I'm just sort of making it up, really. I'm just guessing what it might have tasted like. No, Bradley, I'm I'm having a flashback now. I think we did put it in a video. I can remember watching you drink it <laughs> over Zoom during lockdown. So right. I'm going to try and dig out over that Zoom. video if it exists. Really? Over Zoom, yeah, Blimey. yeah. Okay, I'm well, going to try and maybe. find it, and if it exists, put the link yeah, in the okay. description. Well, if anyone knows what it is, uh, let us know because I can't. <laughs> oh yeah, let that. us know. But we've we've um, got so much beer in our time that yeah. Uh, you know, even I, I can't even remember drinking a, a way out of date V3. So there you go. Don't know what that <laughs> says about me. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's not let's not dwell too much on on uh, <laughs> how your memory is failing you and you work in beer and how those two things might be connected. <laughs> um, we, yeah, we had lots of great comments on this. Lots of people talking about Dipper V3, which I referenced in the in, uh, intro. But um, Father Earth 93, similar to what we talked about last week, um, he, he says, uh, I always struggle to describe aromas and flavours in, in other than generic terms. Any tips? Um, so we put some tips in last week's podcast, so I won't recant them. But, you know, just find what people say as tasting notes and go buy those fruits or those breads or whatever it is and, and check. And, you know, when you... Um, when when we use uh, these words to describe the beers, we're basically remembering what the other things taste like. So you've got to have a clear memory of what they are. Um, so that's, I think, the most helpful thing. But we are going to do a video on tasting notes for sure. Uh, we've had quite a few people ask about that. So that is working its way into our content plan uh, in the next month or two. We had quite a pressing question, Johnny, uh, from Valberg, uh, who asked, is Paul wearing a watch on each wrist? <laughs> was he it looked like he was 
I, I didn't I didn't clock that during the film or the edit. If I'm if I'm entirely honest, um, I'm, I'm going to look right now live. He did, on have, this he did podcast. have two things. It looked like one of them looked like a Rolex, which is pretty pimping, and the other one looked like an Apple Watch to me. So yeah, maybe, maybe he's got a sports watch that's checking his steps and everything, and maybe then he's got a fancy watch. That's what um, it looked like. So that's uh, pretty high rolling of Paul. Um, I don't know why you would need two watches though. It's kind of a weird thing, unless one. Well, you know, you really like your Rolex, but then you also yeah. want something counting your steps and stuff. I can, I can understand it. It's, it's just very Paul Jones to have two watches. Uh, I think for two separate purposes. I think Rolex need to make a roller with a, with a, something that measures a pedometer. They yeah, that would help a, Paul. A Polex. A Polex. A Polex. A, po- a pedlex. Paul's, Paul's the one something. that needs it. Yeah, man. <laughs> There you go, Rolex. If you're listening, um, you can have that one for free. Um, actually, don't have it for free. I want a Rolex. Um, so, yeah, that's this week's uh, video. We've also got a question this week. It's not a recorded question, which is a shame because I love to hear everyone's lovely voices. Um, but it's a deep question, Bradley. Are you ready for this one? Go on, then. So Oliver Oliver Gell has uh, emailed us and he's, uh, he says, uh, in your podcast, I think you mentioned that there are over 100 breweries now in London alone. Here in the Netherlands, there are almost 1,000 that have opened. My question is, what can determine that you're a successful brewery and are able to stand out from the crowd? Um, <laughs> I think the obvious thing to say is the quality of the beer. So let's let's put that one aside. The quality of the beer and the beer that people want to drink so therefore it's brilliant lager or brilliant hazy ipa outside of that brad what do you think are the the key things that you should you should look for in a brewery Uh, marketing and branding for me uh i think it's pretty obvious if you look at some of the companies that have uh well a lot of companies that have sold out had incredible branding um and have, have gone on to be some of the biggest sort of I'm doing it. I'm doing air quotes craft uh, beer brands going. So guys like Beaver Town and and Camden, um, great branding, great great branding. Magic Rock as well. Magic Rock, pretty good branding for me. Not as not as uh, good as the other two, but pretty strong, pretty strong still. And um, so I I honestly think that I mean I'm a branding guy, but I think you know getting the brand right. If you're like a little regional brewer who's making kick-ass beer, but you've got a terrible brand, like you're not going to get it out. Uh, it's not going to reach the same sort of, you know, spe- spectrum as somebody who's got a serious marketing budget and can can like spend big on great design and also getting it out there, advertising in the press and doing stunt stuff like you know the brewery that we shall not say its name a very famous for doing <laughs> the lots of stunt stuff um the scottish play the scottish brewery um <laughs> that's the new sort of shakespearean type take on the situation uh you know all that kind of stuff marketing doing silly stuff how things look for me that's all super important man yeah i mean i think i think that it goes without saying that it's important, but it also, you know, if you're trying to work out which brewery is good, it's not always true that a well-marketed, well-branded brewery is, is oh, no. going to be good. I think even more than with books, you should never judge a beer by its cover unless it's, you know, really detailed and, and good information about the beer inside that's that's going to help you make an informed choice, in which case you can you can almost definitely judge a, a beer by its cover. But I think I think, you know start with craft beer really underestimated the importance of good branding and good and clear communication and now to some extent i think some breweries um focus more on that than they do on the actual liquid they're producing oh yeah a lot of them are leading the charge with with how it looks and you know how this presence on the shelf is is like you know the the premier uh, sorry the, the most important factor to them i would say uh you know you could it's quite cynical potentially trying to sort of build a brand on how it looks rather than the quality of of what's inside the can uh yep. but yeah there's, there's loads of that going on no doubt i think uh, i think sort of a general rule that i use so obviously we spend a lot of time um particularly when we travel we have to make 
slight snap judgments on whether breweries are worth visiting, whether they're good, whether to approach them to make a film, sometimes without having tasted the beer beforehand. Um, so there's there's certain things that I'll definitely look at. I mean, I, mean, um, I think a really good way of telling whether a brewery is is going to be good uh, if you're going or, or be successful is, is very much the attention to detail. So beer is... You know, it's ve- it's pretty easy to make good beer, as we prove week in, week out in our homebrew videos. But it's very, very difficult to make exceptional beer. You know, it's marginal gains from that point on. You know, most of you could take a grandfather, and this is what I love about the grandfather, take the grandfather and make a pretty great beer, you know? Yeah. What's really hard is to make an amazing beer. And so you've got to look for attention to detail. So that could be the marketing. You know, if they're really investing, um, you know, they've got a great local artist that's doing it. The cans are really clear. You can see the name, the style, um, the the name of the beer itself. On the back, there's a description of the beer that really, you know, you can almost taste it because it's that good and it's technical as well and it's educating the consumer. You can be more sure that inside that, they've then going to have really broken down a recipe, really thought about the hop additions. They're going to have made sure there's no oxygen in the the canning or the bottling run. They're going to have made sure uh, perhaps that it spent as little time at warm temperatures as possible in the time that it took to get to you. So it's sort of, you know, great customer service, great branding, um, the ability to accept mistakes as well is a huge thing in brewing. You know, if you look at the breweries that have had cans explode, you can literally tell good brews from bad brews by whether they admit that it was their fault or blame the consumer. Because if they blame the consumer, then they know that the beer they're putting out there isn't in good quality. Whereas if if they're taking the respo- responsibility themselves, then it shows that that was unexpected. They thought they'd done everything they had to. And so they're just blown away that this has happened and they're so sorry. And we've seen that quite a bit in America and, and a couple of times in the in the uk so it's i think attention to detail is one of the ways that you can look at a brewery and go yeah you've you're going to do well if you're caring about every little thing that happens to your your beer and your brand yeah because it's a it's a butterfly effect isn't it you know if you you sort of care about the small stuff all those things like you're saying they add up it's the bigger stuff and um it's 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 a dot yes dominoes it's a butterfly effect um you're going to get great beer, hopefully, if, if someone's that much of a precision person and they care that much and they've invested that much effort and time into everything they do around their brand. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, if you make a hazy IPA, then you're going to be more successful than if you don't, which is a sad state of affairs, but that's another way of uh, of telling. So, yeah, attention to detail, great branding, um, and obviously great beer in the can. Uh, or bottle and all of those things are kind of interconnected i guess Mm. um yeah so thank you very much for your question if you have a question that you want answered on the bubble or or the friday 5 p.m rather all you have to do uh, is send an email to craftbeerboys at gmail.com and it will join the little queue and we'll answer it as soon as we possibly can we like it recorded but we're very happy just to have written ones as well um right that's the end of the podcast all that's left to say is that yeah we're taking two weeks off from podcasting and from videos while i a go on holiday hey Hey. um in in the uk not not going abroad um and then b move house because if you've been following our homebrew exploits that has been a noose around my neck since october last year Uh, We were meant to move a long time ago. And finally, I can say, in fact, today, uh, as you listen to this, I will be collecting my keys and we'll be moving once we're back from holiday. So I'm going to take a a, a little two-week break, recharge, and uh, pull a load of muscles moving home. Nice. Nice. Congrats, man. I know it's been a a fucking nightmare year uh, in terms (laughs) of house and everything else, book and life. So... uh, you deserve a break. Enjoy your holly bobs, and let's Thanks, let's all uh, have a great two weeks off. I think everyone else gets two weeks off as well, right? <laughs> I think, two weeks off. Yeah, when I go away, it's a national holiday. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what, we don't know what to do with ourselves for two weeks. I, I don't know what yeah. I'm going to do. Oh, True. Dear. Well, if you do miss us, you can jump into the Discord forum, which is, if you join our Patreon, you'll get a link to when you join. And you can join all of our friends in there who will keep the beer content flowing, keep the talk flowing. And probably at some point I'll get bored because I don't really know how to not work and I'll jump in there as well. So if you miss us, please do join our Patreon, support us and make sure we come back after a two week break rather than just deciding to move to Hawaii and um, 
I, I don't know. I don't know what people do in Hawaii, but it's, it's probably nicer than what you do in London. So yes, uh, do join our Patreon. Do have a great two weeks, and we'll see you guys for another upload um, in yeah three well two and a half weeks time. Or, um, <laughs> look, <laughs> just leave it there, Johnny. You're burnt out. You need a break. <laughs> Love and beer. Bubble and Friday 5pm podcasts are brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer channel. You can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum, a positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and homebrewing. Love and beer.